what do you think it's been more corrosive to Canadian theatre? Um, the influence from the States, from uh, American writing, from television, or the co more colonial influence from Britain and speak this way? The only No, I, I think that actually the most corrosive thing has to do with uh, uh, a kind of uh, specific gravity of bourgeoisism. <laughs> Meaning that they, they, they realize this potential, you, they go to a certain point, and then there's a kind of gravitation not to um, be willing to live out there. I think that, you know, th there's an assumption that if, you know, if you've got a show and it works, then, you know, the excitement of that is great, and then you, you kind of get caught living on the reputation of it, and you actually then do more comfortable and less out there kind of things and I think that that's more the American experience to me you, you, you make the artist into a product you mm -hmm. come up with a good thing mm -hmm. oh you do that well you write that well you direct that well you yeah. act that well then yeah. you do that for the next 20 years uh -huh. and you build a substantial bank account yeah right? it's uh, well it's uh, yeah in, in um, I think that the most corrosive part has to do with um, our inability to live out there I think Quebecers are uh, Can you more, define more what out, able. What's out, out there, there means to live in that, that, that moment of creative discovery, that capacity for uh, needing to, to go there again for your next uh, show, your next character, your next idea. And um, I think that we have that need, but there's such a comfort zone around us that it gets dulled. Right. And, well, the linguistic need of Quebecers is higher, so if you want to draw the parallel there, there are um, more interesting, there was a guy called Jean-Pierre Ronfart, mm -hmm. who had a lot of success as an experimenter, had credibility as a, as a guy who could pull up the odd classic for the TNM as well, and he was an extraordinary guy who basically uh, reinvented himself about four times and was able to uh, do that, was able to find new groups of people to do that with and an audience that was excited by that idea. And he, you know, there was a really good example of somebody who's lived there. There's very hard to find the equivalent in English Canada. Why? I don't know, specific gravity. I think that uh, the comfort That's inertia. Zone, you mean inertia? Inertia. Well, it's not so much inertia because they're still doing things, but there's a kind of comfort zone. There's a why? Because we're paid too much. Partly, yeah. I would say yes, and therefore, you you wait for the the big payoff rather than, like Quebec. The parallel with Quebec guys, and I th we've talked about this before, is that you know they do they get paid less for their series for their their television stuff than English guys do. Because English guys want to have, you know, more or less some kind of relationship to the American market, uh, money-wise. I, I won't laugh right now. No, you won't but laugh. I'll but laugh okay. Later at no, that no, statement. no. But I'm just sort of saying it, it's not true now, and that's what you're fighting <coughs> Let's over. Let's talk about Sandra Oh. No, no. You, you, Let's talk about Sandra Oh. Uh huh. Yeah, we can certainly do that. But let me just finish this one off. And what they seem to do is to have a. Oh, I know what it is. This is a really thing. They have a. a the, a, um, a certain amount of continuity of activity that happens because either partly on a need because of the, the, the market can sustain that or something like that. What we have here is interesting, exciting things and then it sags or, you know, and then there's no continuity and then it tries to pick up again. And part of that is that there, you know, most of the creativity in Quebec happens in uh, two square kilometers in Montreal. Yeah. Ninety percent of the creativity, maybe even ninety-five percent. But we've got, you know, uh, you know, some of the most creative stuff right now is in Calgary, you know, with One Yellow Rabbit. And but you wouldn't say like that, that we're more commercialized. Our culture is more. Com that's what I feel when well, I come to Quebec. No, no, no. To you, nothing Ontario can be Quebec more commercialized Calgary. than, you know, taking uh, a hit in Quebec. And running it on Saint Denis, on these uh, you know, in these big theaters that they have on Saint Denis, 1,200, 1,400 seats for live audiences dealing with you know anything from brew. That's the micros microscopic uh, yeah. commercial circuit. Yeah, I'm talking a, yeah, about yeah. the macro commercial. The macro circuit. commercial, yeah, obviously <clears throat> creates huge problems for that. Yeah, there's no question. 
But, you know, because uh, I feel like we've been lobo creatively lobotomized in English mm -hmm. Canada by the amount of uh, commercialism we've inhaled mm -hmm. in terms of well, products yeah, and consumption Well, you could say that. Yeah, you could, you know, my daughters all are worried about toxicity, and that's the kind of toxicity I can imagine. Yeah. But I think that, uh, you know, I still think that we should be able to. There should be some really exciting examples of people who have, you know, managed to uh, transcend that. Yeah, there are individuals. But there aren't really, not enough. Uh, and, and not in terms of the continuity and not in terms of the cross under. You know, Graham Greene is doing terrifically. But we can't get him back in this, in this little space here where he started breaking through a door that used to be on this part of the wall here in Crackwalker when Crackwalker got created here in, what was it, 1979 or something like that. Right. Uh, you know, his commercial career wouldn't allow him to do that. The, so the only theater he can do is this somewhere in Stratford, yeah? Right. Although so it would be really up, great to see him go and explore those kind of characters so you think that you, he did in Dry Lips, <coughs> which also played here, <laughs> in the other space. Uh, and I think, you know, I guess and why I'm using that as an example is that um, he was a guy who found energy in these, in these kinds of environments, in the anarchic element of the circumstance that we were starting this conversation with, but the and built out of that. Yeah.